all this stuff and I knew what was going to happen to me. I was going to die and go to hell. And somebody said, maybe you ought to go to church. And I could go to church. But that ain't going to, that ain't going to do any good. I don't even know what's wrong with me. They say, uh, well, your problem is you're a sinner. Well, of course I'm a sinner. Everybody is. I mean, I wasn't no dummy. And all of a sudden, uh, I go and I start hearing preaching. And they say, you know, if you'll ask the Lord to save you, He will. Uh, I don't think so. So I left. I mean, it's kind of hard for a guy to sit here and uh, talk about this because you're, you know, you're a man, all tough and stuff. But I worked in construction, and the uh, Lord was dealing with me. I was working down at a Toyota plant in Georgetown. They had Porter Johns set up there, and I got one of those Porter Johns one day. I cried my eyes out. I mean, I didn't know. I was so lost. I was so lost that I, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to turn. I mean, I'd done stuff that was bad. I'd done all kinds of bad stuff. And I was scared. And finally one day, this guy was preaching they had a little revival at a church house up in uh, Elliott County there on a Thanksgiving night in 1999. He said, if you're here today and you think there's something, something should be better in this life than what you got, come up here and let me talk to you. went up there somebody said did you have a big feeling when you got saved like, no all I knew to do was say did I know the, did I know about Romans 10 9 and 10 no I didn't know anything other than Lord have mercy on me a sin. I left out that day feeling really good because I felt like I'd found what I was looking for. And I knew I was saved. And I was excited. And I went to my mommy. And I said, Mom, I got saved tonight. And you know what she said? Are you sure? No, I ain't sure. I mean, I just figured out where to go. I didn't know anything about what to do. And, you know, up home when, when you went to church, those churches are really good at getting you lost. Yeah. It's the getting you saved part that they have the problem with. You know, they're... Uh, you got to admit that you got a problem, okay? Now... I went for a long time and I was just as saved then as I am now. I know I was. But I didn't have any assurance of salvation whatsoever. I mean, if somebody said, uh, do you know for sure where you're, where you're going when you die? I'd be like, mm, no, maybe 80%. I think I'd go to heaven. I don't know that for sure. I mean, nobody had ever taught me anything. I started dating Heather. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I knew nothing about the Bible. <laughs> and Heather grew up in this church. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it wasn't even a fair argument, really. <laughs> she was sitting there and she said, uh, you believe in eternal security? And I was like, uh, 
I don't even know what you're talking about. She said, well, you know, once you get saved, do you believe you're saved forever? And I was like, no. She said, well, well, I started quoting her Bible verses. It wasn't really Bible verses. It was just things that I'd heard somebody else say. And uh, finally one day, I mean, it's just by the grace of God, she even dated me. And finally one day she said, <laughs> don't laugh, Kelly. Uh, she said, you know, do you ever read that verse over there that says, if you believe not, yet he abideth faithfully, cannot deny himself. And I left thinking about that verse, and I thought, that's it. I mean, if you believe not, which I didn't, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. He's in there. Jesus Christ came in to me. If you go to the Lord, just like that guy there did, and said, Lord, I believe. Help thine unbelief. I believe the Lord will help your unbelief. I believe he'll point you in the right direction. I believe he'll help you out. You say, how can he... How can he help you out? You know, faith, faith has to grow. Faith has to start somewhere. Um, let's see. Turn to Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, it's by the word of God that your faith gets increased. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, if you are having doubts, if you're having troubles, if you've got unbelief, then get into the Bible. Get into the Bible. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. Somebody quote it. Study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, that's where I struggle a lot. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. And you say, what is rightly dividing? Well, turn to James just a minute. I said I've got eternal security. Do you guys have eternal security? Turn over to James. Take me just a minute to get there. Um... Yeah, let's go to let's go to two seventeen. Even so, faith, if hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with works, with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and is, was called a friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. I've heard ever since I've been coming to a independent Baptist church that we get saved. How do we get saved? By grace through faith. By grace through faith. It's nothing that we did. It's by grace through faith. That's how we get saved. But that's not what it says there in James. 
I mean, I believe over there in Ephesians when he says, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But that's not what it says in James. I was trying to wrap my head around that one time and I was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. So I come to Brother Dennis. I said, Dennis, I believe in grace through faith salvation. I'd, I'd believe it. Because through the epistles, that's, that's all the way through there. Everywhere he's writing to the church. And then you get to James. And it says that. It says by grace and faith. Or by faith and works. And Dennis said, all right, turn with me to James. Chapter 1. I turned away from it. James chapter 1, verse number 1 says, James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. And he looked at me and he said, Are you a twelve tribe scattered abroad? And I was like, No. He said, Okay, well, it must be written to someone else then. So, that was my first introduction to rightly dividing. There's different dispensations in this Bible. And when you learn about the different dispensations in the Bible, then you're going to learn a lot that will increase your faith. When you learn more about... We're never going to know how the mind of Jesus Christ works or how the mind of God works. But unless you read the Bible, you're not even going to have an idea. You realize that things led up to Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross for us. So, one of the things that helped me more than anything. Now, do I have to know back there in Genesis 1-1 when he says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Do I have to know anything besides that? I can put my faith in that and say, that's it. I turn everything else off in the world. I believe what the Bible says. And I believe God created the heaven and the earth. But then you get these signs. You, you know, you can't deny a dinosaur. They, there was dinosaurs. And if they said that you can look at the strata and you can see different layers and, and different times and different kinds of fossils and different layers and you think that's true say well how long did that take you know what I have no idea and you know why I have no idea and really it don't, I don't even care because back there in Genesis 1 if you read through there it says and God said, multiply and replenish the earth. If you look at the little things, he didn't say, be fruitful and fill the earth. He said, replenish. Have you guys' water supply ever run out and you have to replenish your water supply? That means there was something there before. So if there was a gap in there, then you know what? All that stuff that that boy's talking about out there, I'm not afraid of that at all. That doesn't even shake my faith. Because I know that who knows how old the earth is? Nobody knows. How was it made? I don't know other than God made it. But there was something before. I mean, the devil was sometime. The angels came in there somewhere. When did that happen? I don't know. And really, I don't care. Because I've got enough to deal with in the church age than try to figure that out back there. But I will say this. Science doesn't scare me. There was a time it did. But not anymore. That don't shake me a bit. You say, how do you get there? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, somebody taught me that stuff. You know, you can read your Bible. It's important to come and listen to a preacher. Because they're taking the Bible 
and they're expounding on the word of God. They'll take a, 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 one of these uh, stories in the Bible, David and Goliath, and they'll take that story and they expound on it and give you whole, I ain't going to say new meaning, more meaning. Or take the creation and they give you more meaning of how you can apply that to your life here. How you can increase your faith. How you can rightly divide and you can see things differently than the average guy sees it. You know how else it will increase your faith? Other Christians will increase your faith. I'm not going to turn to the verses, but you know over there in Proverbs, iron sharpens iron. You know, you get with somebody else and you start talking to them. And you hear about things that the Lord's done for them. And it gets you excited about what the Lord's done for you. Don't ever forget, because I am going to turn to one more place and I'll be done. But if you turn to Philippians 4, your life circumstances, your life situations bring you more faith. Let's see. Go to uh, Philippians 4, verse number 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse number 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, you say, what does that verse mean? Those things that you go through by Christ are giving you strength for the next thing. It increases your faith. And you sit there and you say, the Lord brought me through this one. He's going to bring me through this one. He brought me through that one. He's going to bring me through that one. God ain't going to let you down. And it's the more things that you go through, you learn that Jesus Christ is going to help you through those things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. People kind of, you get the new version, they kind of quote that wrong. It's, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Christ strengthens you. But it's those things that helps you get through. Then you start increasing your faith. Increasing your faith. Increasing your faith. Increasing your faith. I can remember back when me and Heather first got married. We didn't have no money. I mean, we didn't have no <laughs> Oh, what a time. But anyway, I didn't have a good pair. Of, I didn't have any. I barely had clothes that would cover you. I mean, we were in pretty bad shape. And I, I was praying the Lord, Lord, you know, help us, God, you know, trying to do this, trying to do that. I went to work one day, and this guy said, Anthony, what size britches you wear? He said, I have got a. I cleaned out my closet. And he said, I've got a whole bunch of pants that I've outgrown. And I was like, I told him what I wore. And it was the size that he had. And he gave me like 10 brand new pairs of pants. I mean, I ain't saying that. I'm just saying that was from God. People can talk about coincidence. But back to that, our beginning verse, the things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I hoped for those things. God gave it to me. The evidence. Did I see him do that? Do I know where it came from? That's faith. That's faith. If you're here today and your faith's not like it should be, then... You can increase your faith. Get into the Bible. 
You know what? You can think back, and I know you can. You can think back to things that God has brought you through and just look back at how much. I mean, I think about that now. You know, I feel like uh, when, when he put Moses there in the cleft of the rock and he covered him with his hand as the Lord passed by. He couldn't see the Lord pass by until he removed his hand and he looked back and he could see the hind parts but he couldn't see God face to face. God works in your life the, all the way through. You have to be looking for it. Increase your faith. All right, brother Dennis.